Welcome to this HP video discussing the HP Van SDN controller. This video is part of a series of videos discussing the installation and setup of the HP controller. Now Mininet allows you to create virtual networks running Open vSwitch. This allows you through a single command, so using the command sudo mn, to create a network of switches and hosts that can interact with the HP Van SDN controller. It's a great way to develop, share, and experiment with open flow and software-defined networking systems. It is actively developed and supported and is released under a BSD open source license. You can download Mininet from mininet.org and the easiest way to do that is to go to the download link and download the Mininet VM image. So as an example, I'm going to download Ubuntu 14.04 64-bit, which is the recommended version. Now this is a large file. It's 974 meg in size, so it might take a while to download. But it is the easiest way to integrate OpenFlow switches with the HP controller and allows you to build a network locally on your PC to test OpenFlow, test applications, and to try different things when running OpenFlow. So I'll pause the video once again while the software is downloaded. Now that Mininet has downloaded, I'll unzip the zip file. I'll double click on the unzipped directory, double click on the folder inside that directory, and as we can see here, we have an OVF file as well as a VMDK file, which is about 2.8 gig in size. I'll double click on the OVF file to open it using VirtualBox. We're now prompted to import the virtual machine. The name is Mininet-VM. It's an Ubuntu 64-bit operating system. RAM allocated is 1 gig. We can see other information such as the network adapter and virtual disk image. Now you can change in VirtualBox where virtual disks are stored. I'll accept the default and click import. That will then import the Mininet VM into VirtualBox. And there you go. It's now imported. Before I power up the virtual machine, I'm going to go to settings. Click on Network, and I'm going to change NAT to Bridged Adapter. This will allow me once again to connect to the virtual machine using PuTTY. It also tells me that there are invalid settings. So under Display, I'm going to give it more video memory. Click on General. Click OK. Go back to Settings. There aren't any warnings, so I'll click OK again and start up the virtual machine. The Mininet virtual machine is now booting. We can see that this is an Ubuntu 14.04 LTS operating system. I can log in. The default username is Mininet. Default password is Mininet. ifconfig will show me my IP address. In this case, it has an IP address of 192.168.56.67. Now, currently, on the controller, if I click on OpenFlow Monitor, I'll see no switches. No OpenFlow switches have registered with the controller. And under OpenFlow Topology, it shows that no network devices are connected at this time. Note that the IP address of the controller is 192.168.56.93. I'll click on OpenFlow Monitor and notice no switches are connected once again. In Mininet, I'll use the command sudo mn or sudo mininet controller equals remote. And that's because we want to use an external controller, in this case the HP Van STN controller, with IP address 192.168.56.93. And Mininet supports different topologies. In this case, I'll use what's called a linear topology of four switches. And I'm going to add hosts 
to the Mininet topology with simple or easy to read MAC addresses. So I'm going to specify hyphen hyphen MAC. What that does is create a topology of four switches. So if I refresh my browser, you can see that four switches have now connected to the HP controller. All the switches have an IP address of 192.168.56.67, which is the IP address of our Mininet virtual machine. And in the output, you can see that the negotiated version of OpenFlow is 1.0.0. These are open vSwitch switches, which are open source, OpenFlow enabled switches, originally developed by Nasera, which is a company that was formed out of the work at Stanford originally on SDN and OpenFlow. The software version is version 2.0.2. If I click on one of the switches and click on summary, I'll be able to see information about that switch. I'll also be able to see the ports associated with the switch. Each switch is identified by what's called a DPID or data path identifier. We can also look at the flows on the switch in this case, it's using what's called hybrid processing mode, where traffic is sent to the normal pipeline if the switch is not pre-programmed by the controller to do something else. So in this case, DHCP traffic is sent to the controller as well as being forwarded to the normal pipeline or the traditional routing and switching pipeline. Traffic such as ARP is also copied to the controller as well as BDDP, which is broadcast the main discovery protocol, which is used by the controller to discover links in the topology. If we click on OpenFlow topology, we can see that four switches have been discovered. If I press P on my keyboard for ports, it shows me the different port numbers on the switches. It shows me how the switches are connected. So in other words, which port numbers are used to connect the switches to one another. In this example, switch with a DPID or data path identifier of zeros ending in a one has port two connected to switch two. So what is port one connected to? Now when Mininet started up, it added four switches, but it also created four hosts. Each host is connected to one of the switches. If I type the command ping all, the hosts in the topology send traffic and that's then learnt by the controller through the ARP messages or DHCP messages sent. In this case, it would be done via ARP as the hosts send ARP traffic to one another to discover MAC addresses associated with IP addresses. So by pressing N on my keyboard, I can see the MAC addresses of the hosts. In this case, simple MAC addresses were used because I specified the MAC keyword in Mininet. Press N again, I can see a dot. N again, I can see the IP addresses of the devices. Notice as an example that host one is connected to port one on switch one. I'll send pings again between all the devices and I'll open up OpenFlow Monitor. Let's have a look at switch with DPID one. So go to flows. We can see that ARP traffic will be sent to the controller so that it can discover devices in the topology but it's also sent to normal forwarding. Notice the packets and bytes for the last entry, which is sending all traffic that doesn't match ARP, BDDP, or DHCP to the traditional routing and switching pipeline on the switches. When I send more traffic, notice the packet count increases. So in this topology, we've created a network of four switches and four hosts. We can also view the OpenFlow table of a switch using OpenFlow Monitor, or we can click on a switch and click View Details. And that would also show me the OpenFlow table of that switch. So as an example here, you can see IP version 4 packets matching entries in the flow table. Now in the course, you'll learn about pure OpenFlow as well as hybrid processing. This is an example of using hybrid processing where OpenFlow is used only for exception processing. Most traffic is forwarded using traditional routing and switching.
To close the Mininet topology, I simply type exit, and that essentially shuts down the Mininet network. You can use help to get more information about Mininet or visit mininet.org. As an example, there are various topologies, including linear, minimal, reversed, single, and so forth. I'll create a topology of single, but in this case, I'll specify 24 hosts. Before doing that, I'll shut down Mininet. It's good practice to use this command, sudo mn-c, to close Mininet. And then let's try setting up the topology again. I made a mistake there, so I'll type single as follows with 24 hosts. That should create a single switch, which you can see there. Hosts in Mininet are not discovered unless you explicitly tell them to send traffic. The controller requires traffic to be sent from the hosts for them to be discovered. For instance, it intercepts ARP messages. Mininet devices do not send traffic by default, so we need to use the command ping all or another command to generate traffic. So in this case, I'll get all the hosts to send traffic to each other. I'll click on reload to reload the topology on the controller interface and do a ping all again. I'll refresh the controller page. Notice here we have discovered the nodes. Press P, we can see the ports. I can view traffic as an example from this source to this destination. And we can see how that's flowing through the OpenFlow switch. Going to OpenFlow Monitor, I now have a single switch and I can look at flows on that switch. Once again, this is using the normal pipeline or the traditional routing and switching pipeline. So as a test, let's create another topology. So I'll shut Mininet down and then let's create a, another linear topology. But in this case, I'll specify 100 switches. So this might take a while to load up, and you should give your Mininet VM more memory and more processing power to handle such a large topology. The controller is now discovering the Mininet switches and the links between the switches. But what I'd like you to see is that Mininet allows you to easily create topologies of different sizes and of different types of topologies. You can create your own topology. You would use a Python script to create your own topology as an example. And there are graphical tools online that help you create different types of topologies. In this example, I'll send a ping from host 10 as an example to host 99. And as you can see there, the controller has now discovered this host 99 and it's also discovered this host 10, connected to switch 10, and this host is connected to switch 99. Now this example, I can't view the picture very clearly, but when I go to OpenFlow Monitor, notice as an example, I can see a list of switches. And I could look at switch 10 to view the OpenFlow topology of that switch. So I'll stop the Mininet ping, exit Mininet, which will shut the topology down. Now in the labs and the course, you'll try different Mininet topologies. I'll show you one last one, which is tree, and I'll set a depth of four and ping between all the devices. What we've got here is a core switch. Two switches connected to that core switch. So the core switch is level one. These two switches are level two. Each of those level two switches have two switches connected to them, so level three, and level three switches have two switches connected to them. So level four, and the leaf switches have two hosts connected to them. So you can 
quite easily within Mininet create various types of topologies, which you can then use to test and learn OpenFlow and applications running on the controller. In the course, you will install an application on the controller and then use that application to manipulate flows. That concludes this video. This is once again one of a series of videos discussing the installation and setup of the HP Van SDN controller. Please refer to HP's website for additional videos in this series. Thank you for watching.